The best way to describe aggressive inline is to call it Tony Hawk but with skates instead of skateboards. Also for that time the game brought something nice to the formula. It didn't have a timer, which meant that you could skate at your heart's content without being stressed out by the clock. You can lose a level only if you run out of juice, but that will mean for you to stand and do nothing, which means that you'll run out of juice only if you do it on purpose. Also the game formula was different to the Tony Hawk games of that time, by the size of the maps. Tony Hawk games of that period had tiny maps in comparison to the gigantic maps in Aggressive Inline. I mean the maps in Aggressive are gigantic even in base form, and you'll be amazed to see how many areas you can further unlock in those maps. After you'll find out, you'll be shocked how the already gigantic map is even bigger than you expected. Also the maps have easter eggs and have a good amount of detail, and there are 7 of these gigantic maps. In them you get missions on the map and side missions that activate by talking to characters on the map, and there are also collectibles to be found. I know, it sounds similar to the latter Tony Hawk games, like Underground for example, but this game was released before Tony Hawk changed its formula. As for the controls, they feel similar to Tony Hawk. There are some differences though, like for example in the vault and pole mechanics, but for the most part it feels very similar to the tried and true formula of Tony Hawk. Also the upgrade system is a little different. You don't unlock attribute points, but rather get experience points from doing tricks. And the more you do, the more you upgrade your stats. Jump, speed, spin, grind, manual, fakie and wall rack. And there are 12 skaters in the game. And when you change a character, the stat points don't transfer to the character you've selected. The, the other character will have its base stat points. So if you want to upgrade all characters in the game, you will have to finish the game with each character. The game also has a park builder option and there are also some quick fun modes. Like who scores the most in 2 minutes, or combo competitions, or go on a timed egg hunt, or save a parrot. Yeah, that's one mission. And you can also play the game both in single player and in local co-op. I consider it amazing. It's definitely a game worth picking up.